Uh, today's about taking the correct action. The correct action is absolutely crucial. And it's the fifth step in creating anything that you want. And a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people get this wrong. So we need to make sure that we understand how to get it right. Because if we don't know how to create, and unfortunately, um, there's so much misguided information out there. And, and I, just like you, bought into a lot of it. I read the books. I, I tried all the different things. I went to NLP and coaching certifications and got certificates and all these things. And they, they all helped, you know, they all helped and they're perfect at the right time. But did anyone else get the feeling like, why does it have to be this hard? You know, I built this four and a half million dollar company and I just had this overriding feeling. Why does it have to be so hard? You know, you look at how the rest of the, the world or the universe creates and it doesn't seem to be so hard. And I thought, why is it so hard? You know, you have all these people say, you got to work on yourself. Who's heard that? you got to work on yourself. And it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. So it's such a mistake. And, and the, the problem that I see is that, and I know for those of you here every week, I have to keep reinforcing it before we get into the processes, is if we haven't been able to create and manifest everything that we want and we know exactly how to manifest, who agrees that it's exactly what should be taught in schools? Isn't it? Shouldn't they be teaching alchemy and, and how to actually create? Think about this for a moment. If you go back 300 years, there weren't that many people that were educated. True? Only the super rich were educated could read and write. Who's with me with that? So what do you think that they actually educated people on? It definitely wasn't the schooling system we had now. It's such a different thing. They were, they were educating on intuition and creativity and alchemy and creation and how to actually manifest and get things into reality. And we're so far off actually understanding this. I got myself so lost. And, and I want to remind you because what happens is as people go on this journey, they keep falling back into old patterns. And the first pattern is we think we can fix the current reality. So we say, I haven't got to where I want. There's something wrong with me. So I'll go to a Hope Ono course. I'll get a coach. I'll get a healing. I'll do something. I've got to fix myself. And here's why it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you can't work on the current reality. And then all of a sudden just pop out into this other, you know, this other mystical land called your end result. You know, I want to be a millionaire. So I'm going to work on my beliefs about how I'm not a millionaire. And somehow I'm going to magically get over to here to have the money. It just doesn't work. The second mistake that I see people do is that they don't do any work on themselves and they go out there and they focus on strategy. Who's done this before? I've got a huge bookshelf over there in the other room, but we read books. We go to courses. We go, I don't know enough. And so we go out there trying to learn everything. And do you know the biggest problem with learning things? Then you're the one that has to do it. And that's a huge thing they never tell you. If you learn it, you have to then do it. And so you can never scale or grow a big company or do anything big because you know you're the one that does it or you're in control. And you can't possibly master everything that there is to master. True. The next mistake that I see people make consistently is they just work on their conscious mind. Who's with me? All they do is they work on what it is that they know about. And so they're working, trying to, to change, but only work on this tiny little bit of themselves, not actually realizing that there's this huge amount of an unconscious blueprint. And let me prove it to you. Do you know that you have a massive amount, like a literally massive amount of dormant memories and thoughts that are not being used right now? See, if I was to ask you a question, you'd get one of those dormant thoughts and you would bring it into your active current experience. See now, because I haven't asked you a question, nothing's been brought forth, but check this out. When I ask you, when was the last time that you rode your bike? What I know is happening right now is you're scanning. When was it? And then you'll pull a dormant memory out and you'll go, that's when it was. And then you'll be able to act. Who did that happen for, by the way? Yeah. 
And so there's this huge amount of unconscious facility that's there. But the interesting thing about that is most of it, we have, we have no awareness of what's happening. Has this ever happened to you or is it just me? You don't know what's motivating a certain behavior. One moment you're fine and the next moment something comes in. Something triggers you, something sets you off and suddenly you're a different person. Now that's something I'm going to talk about today because we have this huge amount of an unconscious personality that's sitting there. But as I told you, mistake number one, you can't go around trying to heal it or fix it. So the, the truth is, is people also make the mistake that something external to them is going to change them. They think, <laughs> I like it, Peter. They think if I make more money, then more people will like me. Or if I make more money, people won't like me. They think if I just had this, then I'd be different. I'd, I'd feel safe. I'd feel this, I'd feel that. They think something, if I was just in the right relationship, then I would feel good about myself. But what happens inevitably is they're in that relationship and guess what? They still feel exactly the same about themselves. I promise you, I, I was a very stressed out, unhappy millionaire. I remember being that guy going, I made all the money, now I'm supposed to be happy. Why am I not happy? And it's such a big thing in society. We think that other people, uh, material things, achievements, relationships. We think all these are going to change how we feel and we set ourselves up to never be able to have what we truly want. And that moves on to the next one is a lot of times we're out of emotional alignment with what we desire. And I want you to remember this. You cannot grow an abundance tree by planting seeds of scarcity. It's true. Sometimes people say this to me, they go, you know what, Chris, though, change is hard. Change is hard. But that's just been, that's just been what we've been told. It just doesn't line up with quantum physics and the, and the new things we're seeing with it, where we say, look, we can literally change. There is nothing that holds us. In 2001, they found the reconsolidation moment, which is that moment when two neurons go, oh, and they recode, they reconfigure. Who remembers the video of me showing the, the brain um, rechanging itself. If you haven't seen it, I'll show it right now. Uh, let me grab it. Brain. Peter, yeah, you saw it. I know you came to the event. Brain. Uh, brain video, is it called? <laughs> there it is. And our brains are literally recoding. And I want to, I want to keep reminding you of this so that you, you always remember because you've got 20, 30, 40, 40 years of the way that you've been thinking, look, this is a brain learning something. You guys remember the video. This is the reconsolidation moment. This is when a brain learns something new. It literally is recoding and rewiring. There it is right there. That is a zoom up of a brain as it recodes. And that's how it works. It reconsolidates to a new way. And all of our brains have this function. That is why we have the ability to forget something, to learn something new. If you couldn't remember or learn something new, then you would have a problem and you couldn't recode. But most of you on this call can learn something new. You can learn someone's name. You never met them before, there's their name. You can recode and you can change. And the, I guess the thing that I see and what I want to talk about today is action speaks louder than everything. Action speaks louder than anything. And so we can, we, we literally can sit there and do a meditation and then we could collapse everything we've done on the meditation into nothingness by not acting in alignment with who we are. Does that make sense? Action is the last part of creation. It doesn't matter that that seed, you plant two seeds into the same piece of soil, right? And one's a carrot seed and one's a, an apple tree seed, let's say an apple core, an apple pip. You plant into the same ground. 
you put the same fertilizer on it, you put the same water, they're both going to pull different nutrients out of it. They're going to literally, the law of attraction is real. It has to be. Otherwise, how would the apple tree pull out all the, all it needs to, be, to grow apples? And how will carrots pull out everything it needs to become carrots? How would that even happen? It has to happen. However, if I hold the apple seeds back and don't act, don't put them in the soil, don't put the fertilizer, don't put the water, if I don't do the action, no tree will occur. Does that make sense? No, nothing will happen. And so you can be in emotional alignment with everything else, but action speaks the loudest. Action lets you know behavior is the highest form of communication. Behavior, what we do, how we do it informs our subconscious what we truly believe. Because if you sit there going, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, then you get you, you get out there, you, you look at a menu, and the first thing you do is, oh, I'd really like to have that steak. How much is it? Oh, that's too much. And you change your order. You're literally telling the universe by your action that you're not abundant. And that's what today's topic is about. Today's topic is on action. It's on action. So we're going to do a bit of a process, if that's okay with you guys. But in order to do the process, I need to tell you a few things. You have three different types of memory you have conscious memory you have unconscious memory and then you have something called super conscious memory so type them in write them down what are they you have unconscious you have conscious and super conscious now the difference between them is the super conscious is where all your ideas come from have you ever thought where did that idea come from oh we should just do it this way that is your higher self. It is your super conscious. It is super connected. Now, our memories are, are created at different times. And so one memory was there right from conception. And it even speaks the language. You might not think it does, but it does. It learned who you were. It was putting the fabric and the web of you together in the womb. Then the second memory, memory two, is really from zero to four. And that is when you learn to be safe, learn to be a human. This is when you are becoming an individual. It's your individuation phase, if, if that makes sense to any of you. That's when you went, wow, I'm, I'm not my mother anymore. You know, I breathe for myself. I eat for myself. I'm, I'm myself. And then there's a third memory uh, that we have. Uh, and, and that memory starts when we start to think for ourselves. We have these different memories. Now, the key thing to understand is what is memory? Memory is what creates behavior. Today, we're talking about behavior, aren't we? Today, we're talking about behavior. We're talking about action. So before when I asked you, when was the last time you rode your bike? Didn't you go and pull a dormant memory out? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what happens in every moment. That's what happens in every moment. If you have somebody come into your house right now um, with a gun, the way that you act will be by pulling on a dormant memory that's as close to that and putting that there and then acting in alignment with that dormant memory. If you have something great happen, if you somehow were, were given a million dollars and that never happened to you before or it was new, you would pull on your memories and your memory would tell you how to act in that situation. Does this make sense to everybody? That's how it works. Now, the problem is, is when you were young, you could have things and experiences that were really traumatic. Now, not traumatic to you as an adult, but traumatic to you as a child. Think about this. Why does someone have a problem picking up the phone and doing cold calls. Why would someone have a problem standing in front of a room and, and doing a talk on a topic they know about? Why would someone always doubt themselves? Why would that happen? Where does that come from? And, and you look at it logically. You look at yourself, you look at the people, you go, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, they're, they're just ringing someone and say, hey, I've got something that you might be interested in. They don't even remember when they coded up rejection. Because what happens, and this is important, at a young age, 
if we don't have the ability to process rejection, for example, or process lots of money, by the way, a lot of people saw their parents going to a job to get money. And it was so traumatic that they actually don't know why they have such an ab reaction to lots of money. And a lot of times we do the processes I'm talking about today, they realize that they actually had a traumatic experience around it. And what they did is they didn't know how to handle it when they were younger. Does that make sense? They don't know how to handle. I mean, think about it. You guys have seen two-year-olds. They don't know how to handle being rejected, you know, being rejected by their father who's going off to work. Or they know, hey, I want to hang out. I want to play. Father's rejecting, not there. Can't handle it. So it doesn't go into the active experience. And it, it just gets literally cut off from the main personality. Who's with me? Type in a yes if you're getting this. It, it's too traumatic. Yeah, thanks, Peter. So it cuts it off. It says, hey, I can't handle that. Can't handle that shit. And it actually becomes like a, an amnesia to the main personality. Does that make sense? Like the main person that doesn't even know that it exists, doesn't even know that it's there. All it knows is, oh, my, my coach has told me to make a phone call uh, or I got him some money. <gasps> what am I going to do? Right? Or for some reason, they reject love. And they don't know this just something turns up kind of takes them over and they look back and go what's going on there i can't even see it and it's because there's a trauma career there's like an abne the, we we don't even know that it's there but we know that that blueprint motivates behavior and so here's what's interesting here's what's interesting is a process i'm going to take you through today lets you to take the control back because here's the truth. The reason why that was created like that was because your super conscious, your higher self, didn't know what to do with it. It was too painful. And so the super conscious part of you just went, hey, we don't know how to handle this right now. So we're just going to put that over there. And it's not us. We're not that. We're this. And they're going to avoid it. Anything to do with that. And now what's interesting is you can say, you know what? I am the super conscious. I am that part of me. And because I am it, then I created it. Because I created it, I can uncreate it. And I can, I can let it go. And this is what's interesting. When you let these things go, you get to just act. And you get to just be. And this is what the billionaires told me. When I sat around, they said, Chris, you've just got to act. People have so much stories around act, about what they're supposed to do. They say people have to say, in order to have a big business, it has to help people. It has to do this. It has to do this. I have to do, I can never be rejected. All this shit. But you look at the billionaires, they just act. They just go. They just do. They just be. They're just at it. They're just in it. There's no story. Who's with me? Like, there's no noise around here. It's not like, what will people think about me if I made millions? You know, what if someone says, no, they just do it. And that by doing it, that's how they get the results. And so today I'm going to take you through a bit of a process to connect you back to this and say, hey, let's not feel that anymore. And instead, let's just be able to take the action. Let's unplug from it. Let's unplug from it. Let's let it go. You can't heal it. You can treat it. You can let it go. You can remove yourself from it. And, and this is a big thing. You can't be in it and being okay with it and going, yeah, cool, now I'm okay with it and expect manifestation to happen. Here's how manifestation happens and we're going to go through it, okay? Because you guys know this, you've been here, well, some of you have only been here a couple of weeks and some of you have been here six months, but you know the process. Step one, and I want you to type this in or write it down. I need you to keep remembering this every Tuesday because I have to overcome 30 years of your programming. So I, every week, I've got to keep on getting you back to remembering conscious creation. Because when I learned this, I went from a business that went up and then fell down when D died to $2 million in a year and now $5 million a year. That's why I get to teach it. And it was completely different to anything that I thought it was going to be. Step one is you must choose. Step one is you must choose. Write it down, type it out, whatever you need to do. Step one is you must choose. And when you choose, it's just like choosing off a menu. I'm going to have pork. I'm going to have chicken. I'm going to have vegetarian. I'm going to have a pizza. doesn't change who you are. 
It's just a choice, right? It's just a choice. So step one is you just choose. You choose what you want. Step two, after you choose, is you must create structural tension. There's so many rubber bands. I wonder where one is. I'll find one. You guys get it. I don't need to find one. Structural tension. You can never create if you don't understand that we will always take the path of least resistance. So step one is choose. Step two is create structural tension by noticing what it's like now. Without that tension, there is nothing to be released. If you never own where you are, you never get that elastic pulling you somewhere. You just have one side of it. So that's step two. Step three is you must get into the emotion of the end result. So step one is choose. Step two is structural tension. Step three is the emotion of the end result. You get into the emotion. Now, what's interesting, when you get into the emotion of the end result, step, step four, step four, four, four being because that person can't create the new results or you would already have the results. True. If your old reality, if your old identity could have created the results, they would have. You have to let go of the fears, the judgments, the identities. You just got to let it go. You're not going to heal them. You're not going to change that. It's done. You're here. There's no point trying to carry this past to the future. Uh, number four, so choose uh, structural tension. So create structural tension. Three, emotion of the end result. And four is you must unplug, unplug, change, let go of the past. I like to just say unplug today. And then step five is you must take action from the new identity you must take action so step five is to take action because without action without action without planting the seed without calling the person but the key when it comes to action it's never straight action it's diagonal action because you never quite know the right action to take but because you've created structural tension because you've stepped into the emotion of the end result, because of you've let go of who you've been, the universe is pulling you towards it. I don't care which way you want to think about it, but it's pulling you. This is what they didn't teach. These are the, the pieces they didn't teach in these books, you know, about the law of attraction, all this stuff. And it's why people aren't creating huge results, you know? And you guys are lucky. You get to see here, Chris has got a $5 million business, lives here, he's got a mansion, got these things. You're like, that's enough. But I promise you, when I have my $100 million business or my billion dollar business, which I'm calling in and creating, people are going to be hearing this so freaking loud. And it's just awesome to be able to share it now because the results of since learning this to, to now, uh, so big. So let's get into it. Let's do a bit of a process today. So let me ask you, what is it that you want to choose? And type it in. What is something that you want to choose to create? What is something that you want to choose to create this week, this month, this year, this lifetime? What is something that you haven't been able to manifest that you would like to? What is something you'd like to choose? Hey, Tracy, good to see you jumped on. Hey, Michelle, saw you just popped in. So let me know, what would you like to choose? When you choose, Hey, Anthony. Hey, Jamie. I see you guys out um, there on Facebook. If you want to join me on Zoom, I can see um, your comments a bit better. What is it that you're going to choose? $150,000 this year. Good for you. Good for you. Here's the key when you choose. It must not be something you choose to fix your current reality. It must, must just be something that you choose. It must be a end result. <laughs> Which Damien is that that's written that in? Need to catch fit health. Oh, that, uh, what's the end result? <laughs> that's Damien Wright. 
Hey, brother. What's the end result of that? Sales. Yeah. So I want to choose to have sales. Yeah. Nice. So choose sales. I want to choose to create more finance so I can leave my job. But so so that's that choice. Those of you typing in are going to get the coaching is I want to choose to create more more finance so I can leave my job. But what's the real choice there? So the choice is, is I want to, I want to create financial abundance, right? Or I want to uh, have automate. What's that choice? I love this one. I want to be a stand-up comedian. Good for you. Good for you. I'll come. I'll be there. I'll watch you. So I choose that. Okay. So, so we need to choose it. We need to choose it. Anyone else need help on the choice they want to make? Nice. I want $500,000. I want to create abundance, more money to open up more choices. So, so that one, more money to open up more choices, inherently in it, it's not just a pure end result. Can you see guys, when someone writes in, uh, I, I want more money, so then I can have more experiences, what do they really want? Right? What do they really want? They want the more experiences, do you see? You must go for the end result. <clears throat> you must go for the end result. Everything else leads you towards it. I wanna be a speaker. Good for you. I want to be paid for it to be a speaker. Yes, that is an end result. Can everyone see the difference between choosing a milestone versus choosing an end result? And it's a big difference. I want to be a speaker. I want to be a paid speaker, right? So just, just, just choose. You must choose an end result. Nice one. Nice one. So the next question is, if you had that now, how would it feel? If you had that now, how would it feel? And just, just close your eyes for a second if you need to and, and just ask yourself, if I had that, how would it feel? And then when you've got it, type it in, how would it feel? Mm. Proud, that's it, nice. If I was to choose that, how would I feel? If I was to have that, how would I feel? I was to have that now, how would I feel? Fun, energetic, giving, creative, I think, joyful, nice. If I was to have that now, right now, how would I feel? And a good question is, what would it be like? What would it be like to have that? And you might, sometimes I like to close my eyes and just ask myself, what would it be like? Yeah, I got it, Peter. No, no dramas, man. Hey, Jamie, saw that you just jumped on over here. Thank you. Much easier for me. <laughs> Unlimited, fun, thankful, free, excited, adventurous, unstoppable. So the truth is, is, is that's your first, so that's the first choice, okay? So, so that gets us one point on structural tension. So now, this is what most people don't do. Most people don't just look at what it's like now. They just stay out there thinking about it. So, well, and actually some people always just look at the now. <laughs> um, so let me ask you all, uh, compared to that, what, what do you have now? Compared to that, what do you have now? So, you know, uh, Peter, for example, it might be, I don't know if this is true, is I want to be a stand-up comedian. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not. That could be it. That could be all it is. I don't know. Or I've done, I make my friends laugh. I don't know. What's it, what's it true now? I want to have 500,000. And, and you, you know, if it's a money thing or you don't feel like putting it in the chat box, I, I don't mind, but just, just, just what is it like now? Don't, don't be hard on yourself. Some people are hard on themselves. Some people aren't hard enough, but what's it like now? Yeah, nice one, Michelle. So compared to that, what you want, where are you now? Okay. And now here's the one I do want you to type in. How does it feel in life now? How does it feel? Thank you. Some people would say I'm busy trading time for money, frustrated, lots of work, good at what I do, but it's not my true calling. 
So how does it feel now? T type in the feeling. I, I don't need you to, to tell me exactly this. So exactly the same. Yeah, cool. Well, that's part of it, but how does it feel? How does it feel? So if you're getting clear, because Wendy, you're, you're being too nice to yourself. If you're getting clear, that actually means you're unclear. But what you're doing is you're, you're attempting to state it in a positive, okay, which is a good thing to do. However, it actually reduces the tension. Does this make sense? And I don't know if it's true, as I see as a statement in here, but what I know is, uh, let me share this, is, is people normally have a problem with one of three things. They either have a problem with choosing, or they have a problem with clearly looking at where they are, or they have a problem with action, right? They're, they're, those are normally the, the people have one of those three. And so, so I, just, I just saw that for you, Wendy. I don't know if it's... So anxious, unfulfilled, disappointed, makes sense. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know if it's true or not, just, just so you know. Uh, well, it's, it's the three parts of, of um, manifestation is some people have a problem choosing what they really want. Some people have a problem owning where they really are. And then some people really have a problem with the, with the action um, part of it, okay? And, and normally we have one. So, so for me, for example, I have, I have no problem um, noticing that I'm not where I want to be and I have no problem with action. I actually have a hard time choosing what it is that I want. Then I know uh, other people like my friend Colette, she's great at choosing, but, but she doesn't really base herself in actually reality very well. Right. And then I know others who go, I want to be here. I'm here, but they, they just are frozen. They never actually do anything. So anyway, just an interesting thing. So here's the one thing I want you to do is, is have it really clear on where you want to be. And then where are you now? And how does it feel now? Thanks, Deb. How does it feel now compared to where you want to be? And it's just interesting just to notice. Stuck. Yeah, cool. Getting clear. Yep. Trading time for busy, frustrated. Yeah. Anxious, unfulfilled, disappointed. Yeah. So I want you just to notice always working, frustrated, hard work. I just want you to notice uh, for a second that they're not the same person. The emotions are different. Now, here's what's true is you can say to me, but Chris, I couldn't possibly feel abundance without the money. And I'll say, you couldn't possibly have the money without feeling the abundance. Does this make sense? Because if you were to have the money, it would be in direct violation of this identity that you've always been. So what you have to do is you must choose and you must become this version. That's the only way for it to manifest. It can't manifest from here. Thank you. Frustrated, anxious. Good. So we've got those two. Okay. So we've done step one and step two. We've now got structural tension. And what I want you to do, I'm, I'll write it down on a, a piece of paper. I want you to uh, draw it out, okay? So I'll, I'll draw it out. The, the first thing is I want you to draw a circle with your point B. So I'll just write mine and I'll write in here, you know, I really wanna be creating a $10 million a year business. Okay, so I'll write it like that on a piece of paper, see? $10 million a year business. And then I'll go, okay, so how will I feel? I feel momentum. I'd feel, um, what I feel, how would I feel? Like proud, like I'd feel like, yeah, I'd feel proud, like um, satisfied, like I'd feel like I'd overcome, uh, overcome something. Okay, so you write that down, okay? You write it down. And then I want you to, to, to get your point A. Okay, this sets up your structural tension. So this is compared to that, where are you? Okay, you see that? So where am I now? Okay, so now we, we do about five. And how does it feel now compared to there? It feels, <laughs> I feel impatient. <laughs> I feel, but I, I feel very, uh, I do feel momentum. Feel, um, how do I feel now compared to that? Feel, I 
just a bit. I feel like I'm in awe of watching it all happen. Okay, so do you see that? You set it up. Can everyone see that? A and A and B. And it's nice to do this because this is how creation happens. By the way, that is the tension, the structural tension. I'm here. I want to be here. Okay. That are the, those are the two points of, of polarity that create. So, so what we do now is we want to step into the emotion of the end result. Okay. So we're going to step into the emotion of the end result into the point B. Um, I didn't give you any time to write that down. Sorry. Can everyone type in a yes when you've got something like this, or you maybe have done it on a word doc, just, just a bit of a timing. So I know I'll wait for at least half the people to write. Yes. <laughs> I was like, Hey, do this. And now on to the next topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. I'll just wait for half. I see, I see those typing in. I'll wait to half are done. At least. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to step into the end result and we're going to ask ourselves, we're going to bask in it. Okay. The end result, your point B. We're going to, and then, by the way, this is why point B education you'll see on a lot of my uh, things, because this is the truth. You step into your point B and what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, well, what was the action that I needed to take? Okay. What was the action that I needed to take that moved me from A and started moving me towards B? What was the next action? Okay. So if you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. And just step into the emotion of the end result. How does it feel to have that now? And just feel it. Just be it. What's it like to be that person? And now that you're there, look back towards the current reality in your mind and imagine all the way back then and ask yourself, what was the next step that I had to take? when you've got it, open your eyes and write it down or type it in. What was the next step that I had to take? When you've got to open your eyes and write it down. Let me know when you got it. What was the next action that you need to take? This is the truest action. Nice. Rehearse the five minute set. Good for you, Peter. Schedule my time. Fantastic. Good one, Deb. Good. Promoting self through various means. Nice, Ash. Good for you. If you don't know, just go into the emotion and the end result and ask yourself, what did I do next to get from there to here? There had to be something. Press call. Nice one. Start. I guess that would be let's go. It's time to start. Yeah, nice. Cool. So I've seen it. Uh, is there anyone stuck? Just let me know if you're stuck on this. I don't think so. I think it feels like everyone's pretty happy with, with this. Going once. Anyone stuck? <laughs> no, I think we're good. Mary, stuck again. Okay, Mary, same as last week. I'm going to kick your butt again. You've got this. All right, let's do it together. I was waiting for it. I know, but I know you know what we're about to do. So step into the emotion and the end result. Go into it fully. And then ask yourself, what was the next step that I took? What was the next step that I took? What was the next thing I had to do? And when you've got it, let me know you've got it. Open your eyes and write it down. By the way, guys, this is the way to find the next action that you should take. You always ask yourself, what, was the what would the person I'm becoming do right now? 
not what's the person I am right now. What are they wanting to do? Mary, did you get it? I'd say trust yourself. Be more time efficient. Fantastic. Yeah, nice one, Ed. Okay, so here's the question. When it comes to that action, what stories and reservations do you have? So what stories and reservations do you have about that? When you think about it, how do you stop yourself from taking that action? What stories, what reservations do you have? Just, just let them fly. So what I got was focus. Okay, so here's mine. You know, there is, that's where I am. That's where I want to be. Mine came in focus. So then what are the, the action, the focus, the stories and reservations is, what if I've got it wrong? You know, what do I do if I just stay focused? What's my role? So mine, one of mine is, what do I do then? What are your stories? Or res I get overwhelmed. I don't have enough, so, so I can't fit in each day. But what's your reservation about doing the time efficiency? What's the reservation about just doing it? Ah, it's the opposite of freedom. There you go. So I want freedom, but I've got to do this thing. Oh, well, this ain't freedom, so why would I do it? Not good enough. There you go. Being judged, judged by who? Judged by who? So what are your reservations about doing it? Because if you didn't have any, uh, if you didn't have any, then you would have already done it. What are your reservations about becoming time efficient? What are your reservations? Nice. So ne next question is, how are you conflicted about fear of failure? Yeah, fear that no one will buy, not good enough. Well, no one will buy if you don't take the action as well. May, what do you mean maybe mary <laughs> i like that you're like well maybe it's this no it's that <laughs> it's that so the, <laughs> i know a good try <laughs> fear of failure i might actually have to do this yeah being seen fear of failure self-fulfilling prophecy yeah it, well it is deb absolutely so so here's the question you got to ask yourself is well how am i conflicted about this I know part of me wants to do it. What's the part that doesn't want to do it? The part that's in conflict. Ah, oh, you've tried this before. Ah, oh, people will judge you. Ah, oh, what is it? Like, just, just get it all out. Get it all out on a piece of paper. What stories, what judgments do you have about yourself? How do you judge others? How do you judge the world? What beliefs do you have about this? I'm just going to do mine as well, <laughs> just because, just because it's a good process. It's a bad habit. I've become one of those people then. And I'm not one of them. All right, what else, guys? What else? What else do you have that stops you from taking that action? What if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? What if others let me down? Right? My, my big one is I've grown past this before and I fell and it hurts. It hurts when you fall from a hard, from a height. And so what we're doing, by the way, guys, is we're pulling stuff out of that, uh, of those memories that, you know, when I asked you, you know, when was the last time you rode your bike, those dormant memories, we're pulling those out right now and we're putting them up on display. Right? Yeah, enough is enough. Just enough. Like, I don't need, yeah, uh, people get this story. Why would I need all that extra money? You know, and I always say, 100 grand is selfish. You don't help no one with 100 grand except yourself. You know, I always say, in fact, a million is selfish. Yeah, well, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a good story. What if I don't understand? Right? What if I don't understand what I'm doing? Yeah, it's good. It's a good reservation saying, well, I have to understand everything before I do it. 
right? I can't possibly just learn as I'm doing. I couldn't trust myself. Nice. <laughs> that is quite funny, Peter. But I, I know what you mean. They won't laugh with you. They'll laugh at you. Yeah. Peter, Peter's going to become a stand up comedian. And he says, as ironic as it sounds, they might laugh at me. In fact, this could be a joke. <laughs> you know, you could say I was going to I was going to be a stand up comedian, but I was just I was so scared that that when I became one, everyone would just laugh at me and criticize me. And then I realized that was the point. <laughs> yeah, I, I could I could do your, your skit for you. I think I'm funny. <laughs> That's funny. So what is a, a bit of both they should bring up an old memory? Yeah, good. So what we're doing is we are, we're bringing up, we're bringing up things and we're putting them up on display. And so here's what I want you to know as, and just keep doing this. Well, what stops me? Why haven't I taken that action? Why, what's in the way of doing that? Okay. And don't try to tell yourself nothing because otherwise you would have already done it. Right. Yeah, I've said it all. <laughs> True. You would have already done it. So, so here's, here's what's, what I find interesting about this is everything that you're writing up in front of you, who created it? Who created all this? Who created this? Yeah, you did. And I created mine and everyone else created theirs. True? Everyone created it. But you don't know when you created it and you definitely didn't consciously create it, did you? So let me know. Do you, do you know that you, you created it? Well, yes and no. Well, if you didn't create it, then who else created it? Who else created it? Well, okay, good. I struggle to understand. So, so these stories, all of, the, all of these beliefs about this, these worries about it, are they true for every single human being on the planet? Of course they can't be. And so... At some level, you chose this to protect yourself from something. You see, uh, you, you chose to have these in order to stop yourself doing something, right? You chose to have these to stop yourself doing something that might manifest what you don't want. So, for example, you will have a belief that well, I can't go and do this because then I'll be judged. So you don't do it. So you create a story around not doing because you're scared of judgment. What does that protect you from? Right? It protects you from judgment. And so it's there for, for a reason. Now, a lot of times we don't actually know where or why or how we created this because sometimes we created these way before we had any conscious thinking. Does that make sense? Who knows when or why or how you created it? There's a book that I'm reading at the moment that says we get past a lot of things through our DNA from our parents. But the, the truth is, is that you might have family members that haven't got this exact structure. So the only truth is it's something that we created. And so here's what's interesting. You have to ask yourself, well, since you created it and you're this amazing being, you've got all of this understanding. The choice is, do you want to keep it or let it go? Do you want to keep this and just tell me, let me know you can, cause you can keep it. It's no, there's no problem saying, you know, Hey, I, I don't want to do it cause I'm scared of it, but it's just a choice. It's just a choice because you think about it and, and, uh, and I'll use someone on here, you know, go, trying to make cold calls. Well, I don't want to make cold calls because I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to get a rejection. Okay, great. Well, don't make them then. That's fine. That's, that's fine. That's no problem. But if you uh, have a whole heap of people that, you, that have the problem and you want, to, you want to solve the problem, maybe you want to choose something else. So I want to let you know, I'm not telling you you got to let go of anything. Those of you who do want to let this go, uh, you, you can, you can, but it's just a choice because you've created you and you're powerful, man. You, you know, you're powerful. You're so powerful. You, 
you you created all sorts of rules and structures and stories to protect yourself to stop pain happening and and because you saw pain in others maybe or trauma you you know you made a decision oh i can't figure out computers and you made it true and you can figure out things way harder than that and so you made it a thing and then it became you but then you trace it all the way back and it was it was something silly and you you know you go wow that's why i did that and so it's just so interesting i know i seen you typing in you go i don't know i don't want it anymore and so here's what someone else might tell you. You got to heal it. You got to do all these things. But here's what I'm going to tell you. You just got to let it go.